welcome back and I'm going to be asking the question can AI these large language models can they convert a graphical language like LabVIEW uh, into another language I'm going to pick Python this because it's a straightforward one uh, is it possible no I'd actually asked uh, chat GPT I think it was ChatGPT4 because you get so many free goes on ChatGPT4 and then it boots you back to 3.5. So I asked it if it could do this and it said no, it couldn't do it. So actually, rather silly, I never actually bothered trying it because it said it couldn't do it. Then online I was talking to somebody in LinkedIn and uh, he said that uh, yes, it did it. And I was a bit sceptical to begin with. So I said to him, well, I already asked ChatGPT if it could do it and it, and it said it couldn't. And he said, yeah, but it does it, it does it anyway on ChatGPT4. So uh, I thought, um, yeah, OK, even though it thinks it can't do it, it can do it. Let's see if it can. Uh, so first of all, I, I thought I'd use Claude 3.5 because I've been having some good results with that. And um, here's Claude 3.5. And uh, I had some good results with mathematics on it. It was really good on that. Uh, and, and I've just uploaded this image and I'll just show you the program first of all. So I'll just run it. Um, I think it's this one. Yeah, so here we go. So it's, no, I've picked quite a simple program. Uh, I haven't, it's not really testing it that heavily. So this, so this, those of you that don't know LabVIEW, it's a graphical language uh, used mostly probably by engineers. Uh, and it's also can be applied to real-time systems, target systems like the Rio and the my Rio and um, whatever else uh, comes up and that's the real-time lab view though but it's very similar to this uh, so what we've got here is a for loop and you can make them up you know there's a whole load of blocks which you can pick this is graphical programming so there's pluses and minuses and multiplications and a whole load of things you can pull over for structures you can have for loops while loops and a whole lot of other things, sequences and case structures and so on. So he, what we've got here is a for loop and it goes around a hundred times with that much we know. And uh, I here is the index, but I doesn't go from one to a hundred like it would in MATLAB. It goes from zero to 99. And I think that's the default in a lot of languages um, nowadays. Most languages start at zero. MATLAB being the um, exception and there's a lot of jokes about it, April Fool jokes that they change it on you know, April the 1st, they change it to LabVIEW so it starts as indexes from zero rather than from, from one. But anyway, it usually start from zero. So this goes from zero to 99. And this thing here is a, a shift register. If you put the mouse over, it says shift register. This is an indicator which is on the front panel and that will show them the results. So this is going to go around 100 times starting at zero. So it's going to go zero to 99. Better be careful there, not zero to 100. This is one of the basic questions they ask you when you're doing your LabVIEW professional developer uh, courses, something like this. They, they will ask you what's the output if you run this program. It's normally a bit smaller than that, but I made it big so you can see it. Uh, so th this starts at zero and you get zero plus zero, which is zero. And the register works by storing the value, which means it's here the next time round the loop. You can imagine you're cycling around the edge of this. It's the only way I can think of it. Uh, then it's um, it's going to be one here, and then one adds to zero, and you get one, and then one is stored here, back here, and then you get the one plus two is three, and so on. And it'll go up to 99. So what value should we get if we add all the numbers zero to 99? Well. There's a basic formula for that, which is n times n plus 1 over 2, if you remember. That's the sum to n terms of anything. You can use that when you're doing these quizzes and things. I'm just going to use the calculator. That's the one that we made earlier in a previous video. So it's it's not 100, it's 99. Um, so it is, is, is the final value. So it's 99 multiplied by n plus 1, which is 100, divided by 2. And that should give us a 4,950. That's what it should be. So let's run the program. You run it by pressing this button. 4,950. So it's exactly right. So that's OK. So what I did then was uh, I just uh, 
run the um, capture thing, which is the snip tool or whatever method you like, and um, and just capture the this thing and uh, in an image and saved it as an image, and then I went to first of all I went to to uh, Claude and I uploaded it. There's the image there, and I said convert the following lab view code in the image to Python. And it's very confident in its answer, which is fantastic. The only trouble is it's wrong. So it says this lab view block diagram appears to be performing a simple addition operation, but it's not. It's it's in a loop. So it, uh, and I don't really know what it says. So the input it says it takes an input value of a hundred, and it adds twenty three, and then it gives the result. And there's I'm not going to bother running this program because I know it's wrong. Um, so there's no loop for a start, so that's why I know it. I don't know where it's getting 23 from. Uh, that's that's way out. So then I went to ChatGPT, and I haven't got the um, uh, full. Ver I haven't got ChatGPT4, but I run Chat. I get so many free goes at it as everybody does, I think, and then it stops you, and you have to use 3.5. So I uploaded it, and it said convert the uploaded LabVIEW program into Python, and now we're talking. Uh, the script initializes a sum variable, iterates 100 times, adds the iteration index to the sum, and then prints the result. This, so here's my um, uh, Python code. So it starts at zero, uh, is, is, and initializes this thing called sum, which is zero, and then it goes around a loop. Now this thing called range, if you look it up in, in um, Python, if you don't know Python, it creates a sequence of numbers from 0 to um, n minus 1. So if you have a range of 6, for example, it goes from 0 to 5. Just like in our LabVIEW program, where I said you put 100 in and it goes from 0 to 99. So in ChatGPT, it said one for i in range 100, so that means it's going to go from 0 to 99, which is exactly right. And that sum plus equal, that's the, the old C thing. You know, uh, total sum is total sum plus i, and go around that loop, and then it's going to print the answer. So let's try it and see if it um, does. I just paste it into PyCharm. So there's our program, and let's run it. And down here it says total sum is 4950. Absolutely correct. So let's try something a little bit more difficult. Let's pick a while loop. The while loop is a loop that goes around forever rather than just the previous example of a hundred times. You need a logical variable or a switch to turn it off. So I create a control which is a stop button and that should be on the front panel of my VI. If I run it, it's not doing anything but I can stop it. Now I need to put something in there. I was just thinking, just see if it recognises the um, uh, lab view library and so what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a sine wave in I think that's signal well one way is to use the signal processing library and we'll use signal generation and uh, we want um, we don't we want sine wave not sine pattern the way I'm doing it and this is going to run forever so I'm going to um, so I need a, a an output, so I'm going to take the output here and then create an indicator. It will be in, really will be interesting if it can do this. I don't really want a numbers, I want a graph. So um, it maybe just give me numbers when I, when I convert, but let's, let's try it. So I'm going to replace it with a graph. Oh, waveform. I can't use a chart because a chart's for scalars. So that's my graph. So now I'm going to uh, put a sine wave in. Uh, and I've got to specify the number of, number of samples. So let's say I put um, create constant. I put in 1,000. That means it's going to do 1,000, then another 1,000, then another 1,000, and so on forever until I stop it. So it's doing it in blocks of 1,000. The amplitude I'm just, amplitude I'm just going to do make it one default and then I need a normalized frequency so I, I put a divider in that's a numeric divider 
and I'm going to put a fictional sampling frequency. I needn't do this, have to do this, but create constant. I'm just going to make it 10, as if it was running at 10 kilohertz. It means nothing in the simulation, but I'll put that in the frequency. And then my actual frequency is going to get divided by the sampling frequency. So uh, let's suppose I want it uh, 1 kilohertz. Then the, the normalized frequency that goes into that uh, uh, sine wave sub there is uh, 1,000 over 10,000. So I'm going to put a knob on the front to create control. Uh, and it's, oh, there it is. And then I'm going to make that, replace it um, with numerical, what is it? I'm not sure what the difference between a knob and a dial is, but it's called it X. I'll, I'll show, rename this frequency. So it's got some kind of meaning, frequency in hertz, and this goes up to 5 kilohertz, half sampling. But sampling at 10 kilohertz goes up to 5,000, but uh, I needn't go that high. I'm only going to go to, say, 200, so I can see what, what's on the on the uh, screen here. I'll make it a bit bigger. Okay, so there's my graph. So what should happen there, I'll just, it's going to get a bit, if I don't make it clearer what's going on, it's going to look messy. Divide, we divide the frequency by the sampling frequency and the amplitude one. We could vary that if we wanted to. A thousand samples and the yeah, output. So that's what it's doing. Let's just run it and it should just display. I'm going to have to set the let's set the frequency to 20 hertz or something like that. And then run it and there we go. And I can change this of course and make it bigger. And that's why I didn't wait to make it too high because it just becomes a mess. And I could change the amplitude as well if I wanted to, but I'll just leave it there. So let's capture that and uh, feed it into ChatGPT. So I'm going to capture this snippet. I'm going to snip it. I'm going to save that. Let's, um, so I've saved it. Uh, I don't really need this anymore. But um, so we'll, we'll save it anyway. And uh, I'm going to go into ChatGPT. I'm going to get away from this um, Claude thing and just go straight into ChatGPT. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Right. So convert. LabVIEW um, code, or shall I call it a diagram, into Python and list code. Write it properly. So I'm just going to upload the the thing. Upload from computer capture. It's loading it. I think it's loaded it. Okay, I assume it's loaded it. Now let's let it run. Let it rock and roll. That's pretty quick this time. It says it generates a sine wave with specific frequencies. Hmm. So it's using the um, the NumPy library and the Mat the MATLAB or well, the Matplot library in in uh, Python, and it set the frequency to be 10 hertz sampling frequency 10 kilohertz, which is right. That's what we did, and it's put a duration of one second as well. It's the matter. Um, and it's the sine wave as two pi times now the frequency. Um, not sure how that's going to work out under the sign. Normally, you, it needs to be normalized unless the time is uh, normalized. If it's real duration, then it might be okay. So let's just try it and see what it comes up with. Um, go back to PyCharm. Paste it in there. 
And it, first of all, it's a complaint. It doesn't know what these libraries are. So it says no module named NumPy. So I have to install the package. That's because I didn't set it up initially quite right. Um, and it's still come up with an error because it doesn't know the MATLAB one. Yeah, it doesn't know the MATLAB one. So install the mat plot live now now it's got both libraries that's what's good about the environment here is you can install things very quickly oh, it doesn't like that either no module named mat plot live oh it did find it and there we go so it, it's not uh, animated of course like lab view um, but it's I guess it's done something similar and that it's produced a sine wave um, um, of course it, I, I would have preferred if in somehow you can um, use that it would have produced a GUI um, but you know that would probably need a, a specialized AI type uh, thing that's a bit more direct but it's it's still not bad really um, considering it's done from a graph so uh, it's not going to give you um, everything but uh, it can give you an idea of what's happening okay thank you very much